I've invented something. Looks like paracord or miniature paracord, but it's actually antenna wire. This is RSE line. Now I'm going to show you what it is, how to use it, and how it stacks up to copper wire. We're also going to find out if I just made 6,000 feet of useless What is this? Well, it's a conductive cord. It's quite strong. It's a lot like uh, paracord, but it's only 1.5 millimeters in diameter. What is on the inside is some carbon fiber, but what's special about this is that it is coated in nickel, and therefore it is quite conductive. Let me go through some of the features. It is super flexible. You can tie knots in it. You can splice it like a rigger does with FIDs, and we will go into that in a future video. The velocity factor is 0.94, very close to copper wire, and it is super light. We're talking 100 grams for 100 feet. That works out to about four ounces. And the braking strength, it's 300 pounds. In fact, you can hand brake most wires, but you can't hand brake RSE line. I want you to notice that um, that really hurt. So it's not like I'm not trying to break this stuff. It uh, tries to break you. The manufacturer did an overbraid on this. And when they do that, they can also do a tensile test. And here are the results. 306 pounds braking strength. That's not too darn bad. Now, you're not going to want to actually take it to this limit. You'll probably want to stay in around 180 pounds, but that's better than most wires. This is not a copper conductor, so this is going to have some resistance. And the resistance of about 4, 4.2 ohms per meter. And a few of you are probably going to go, oh my god, we can't use that. And I thought the same. I had a local Elmer go through Easy Neck and take a look at this, just because I'm gonna be biased. He modeled up an inverted V dipole for 40 meters with 12 gauge wire, and what he got was 5.67 dBi for the lobe gain. If you use 39 copper, which is equivalent to the RSE line, what they found was is that the lobe reduced to 3.81 dBi. Remember that this is still 3.8 dBi gain with this stuff. It's not a loss, so it's better than a quarter wave vertical. How does RSE line perform? I'm gonna do a quick whisper test with two cycles. We're gonna run copper wire first and then the RSE line. You see that just the wire dipole above my head and that's for 20 meters. So we'll do the scan. And that's for the wire. So 1.44 in the shack here now. We've got Whisper set up. We're bringing it in on my 991A. I'm gonna run two cycles of Whisper on the wire. Now we've got the RSE line up. Let's just do a scan of 20 meters. It's pretty similar. It's maybe on the upper end of the band, but uh, 1.36. We're gonna try the RSE line for the first time. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda of nervous about this test to find out if I've just made 6,000 feet of maybe counterpoise wire or if this is a legitimate antenna. First, let me show you the two maps from the Whisper test. This is where things get kind of interesting. With the wire, we had a few long distance DX reports, but the RSE line had double the amount of reports than the copper wire. I'm going to call the data here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take anything that is negative 15 and below, and we're gonna remove it from the data set. That red dashed line is around negative 15 dB. This is the threshold where SSB voice becomes understandable. You'll notice that the second that we do this, all the DX reports go away. And what ends up happening here is that we have an SNR versus distance, and that the outlier threshold of 12,000 kilometers and the SSB threshold of negative 15 dB gives you the data set in the top left. With all the outliers removed, we end up with a 0.4 dB difference between the two antennas. Statistically, they're exactly the same. 
Now here is an SNR spread comparison of the wire and the RSE, and this will give you an idea of the amount of variance that we have from all those points and where everything basically lies as far as the SSB threshold goes. Now, how do you hook up to this stuff? Well, my method here is to basically attach a ferrule to the end. What I generally try to do is to push some wire to the inside of this so that you have something really solid to crimp onto. It also gives you a little more reinforcement on the back end of the hookup. Then what you want to do is use three to one heat shrink. Generally three to one heat shrink has glue on the inside. And when it goes over top of the braid, it will actually glue onto it and make it super tough. Like regular paracord or cords in general is you can tie knots. You can do overhand knots. You do loops, you can do prussics, figure eights. We will be covering the knots and how they work and what they can do for you. One thing that's super cool is, is that you can tune these with a sliding knot. So what we're gonna do here is a quick scan. So you can see that we're at the bottom end of the band here. So that means the raise the frequency, is shorten the antenna. So let's take about an inch out, see what happens and hit scan and you'll notice that now it is at the top of the band so let's just bring it back just a little bit like that to another scan with a knot and an overhand bite you can adjust the frequency of these antennas very quickly why would you want this well if you cut your wires longer than they should you can just do a fold over and a bite and tune them up and then lock them down. You're done. No more over trimming. Because this is carbon fiber with a nickel plating, you can solder to the end of this. Vince V6LK has done a video of how he puts banana plugs on the end of this, and he also will be doing a review video on this so that you don't have to take my word that this stuff actually works. RSE line is patent pending, and it will be running in around 75 cents per foot US or a dollar per foot Canadian and I hope to get it in your hands here quite shortly. You'll find links below for an email list of when I release this, which should be within the next couple of weeks. Get your name into that email list and I can make sure that you can get some of this stuff as soon as possible. Also remember to check out Vince V6LK and his channel. He will be showing you how to solder the ends of this he will also be doing a test on this line, so you don't have to take my word for whether this stuff works or not.